Hello everyone, my name is Alberto, welcome back to my channel. We're making a pend today. I traced this uh, sort of basic pattern, this is for a skinny jean, and I'm gonna modify it a little bit because I want to get those sort of like wide kind of cargo-ish pants uh, that I saw around for a long time, always wanted a pair. So I'm making the whole pant wider. In my case, I decided for the shape I liked uh, that I'm gonna add several pleats as well. I'm using another pen for reference just to basically see how wide to actually make them. So I'm gonna take a random measurement and sort of report it on the pattern and that's where I'm gonna start making them wider and I'm gonna use that as a reference just simply for size because I know that these ones fit me and they're sort of the vibe I'm looking for. So uh, I'm not gonna show you the whole modification of the pattern but just as a general idea um, to see that like you start from something very simple and basic. You could start obviously from a wider pattern but this is something I had lying around and then you can make all the modifications you want to get something really different. Because as I said, uh, starting from a skinny jeans pattern, we will get what you'll see at the end of the video. So I'm measuring the bottom in because I made it so much wider and I want to know how much I need to put in the pleats in order to close the hem enough so we get that sort of balloon effect that I want. I'm also treating it sort of like a pair of jeans, uh, so I'm making a back pocket like the ones from jeans, but a bit po pointier, sort of more 70s-like. And as you can see here, especially I think uh, pattern making is all about geometry which is what makes it quite fun. You can make some really cool things with pattern making. This is a simple example, but you know. I also decided to add a front pleat at the top because I have three pleats at the bottom and I think to balance out both the shape and the sort of general vibe of the pant that would make it look better. So I'm cutting the whole length of the pant and adding a strip of paper, which is gonna be the whole pleat, the whole amount of fabric that I'm gonna add to it. So after that, I went to the store, I found these beautiful corduroys, so I decided to go with that. I found one that's very, very nice for me, I think. Very pretty, colors nice. Uh, I think it will suit me as well. So I cut out all of my pieces. Uh, as you see, I didn't pin it or anything, just put some weights on it. Uh, it's not a light fabric, it doesn't move around, it's not a big deal. Started making the pockets and attaching them. As I said, I'm treating it sort of as a pair of jeans not like a classic men's pant so it's not very delicate but that's what i was going for i stitched on the pocket quite simply i made the double stitch again like denim no decorative stitching on the pockets itself because being corduroy it would look a bit weird and sort of disrupt the velvety bits I'm joining the center back which I already overlocked now making the actual pockets the inside of the front pockets uh, overlocking the bottom 
again, this is a very simple join. It could be nicer with a folded bit, but I think inside this would work quite well. It is for me. I'm gonna go simpler. Uh, and then I'm gonna attach the inside lining of the front pocket. I'm gonna do my little card cuts in order to have a cleaner curve. Stitching it both inside and outside so this will not tend to turn to the outside. It's gonna stay nicer and cleaner. And after my top stitching is done, I'm actually gonna add the back lining. I'm just gonna sort of tack it in place with a couple stitches, not sew it all the way, because first I have the pleat at the top that I still need to make, and also I still need to actually close the pocket inside. So now I'm closing the pocket, I'm both sewing it and overlocking it. You could do just overlock, but I think this way it's sort of sturdier and I like it more. Now I'm gonna sew the pleat at the top, as you can see. Now I'm mm, putting together the zipper. I use these um, zipper that, zippers that you put together yourself so you get the exact length you want. Uh, you could use a normal pocket uh, and jean zipper. It doesn't really matter, but I had these lying around, which they're quite handy. You can close the end just by stitching on it. And yeah, that's it. Uh, putting together also the other parts of the zipper. I didn't film the whole process here because I had an old video on how to change a denim zipper and this is the exact same thing. So I didn't want to repeat myself because it's, it's quite a long video by itself. But yeah, again, just sewing and overlocking all the pieces together. Now I'm overlocking the sides. This will hold the pocket in place and uh, give a finish so it's not gonna fray or move around too much. Doing the same thing in the back side as well. And now I'm actually putting them together. Uh, this is a simple seam uh, for the outside. On the inside seam, uh, the inside leg seam, we're gonna do a, a sort of a fake French seam. Again, exactly like in denim. You can do whatever you want. You could do a French seam on the outside as well. Uh, I was still sort of iffy on the sizing because I didn't make a toile, but mm, yeah, turned out pretty good. Then we're going to press it quickly. Uh, being that this is a simple seam, it looks a bit cleaner on corduroy. Uh, also, I'm using this sort of guard on the iron, which works well for velvet and velvety fabrics, uh, because otherwise you would need to put maybe like a cloth or something, not to avoid crushing uh, the velvet or burning it, because you would see the difference. With this, uh, from the outside at least, it turned out very, very nice. So it worked pretty well. 
I'm also finally closing my central third pleat because it is right on the seam, the side seam of the band, so I couldn't do it before. And I'm sewing all my pleats to one side. This is going to make it easier uh, to then hem the band because they're going to keep them sort of in, in place. Uh, this is uh, the center seam of the leg, which, as I said, I'm sewing together first like that, and then I'm going to sew to one side in order to make a um, fake French seam. It's not a real French seam because it's not completely encased, but it's just uh, sewn normally, overlocked together, and then sewn to one side. So it's, it's just stitched down the uh, overlocked seat, basically. Then I prepared my belt loops, which are just little tubes that I top stitched. I put some adhesive on another piece in order to cut my belt, I measured and cut the pieces, and then I'm folding one side. This is uh, to get a cleaner finish when you attach it. Usually I keep the folded side to the outside of the band. Then we close the belt together and I cut out the extra bits so it again looks cleaner. I'm attaching the belt first on the inside of the pant and then before attaching it from the outside I'm actually putting in the belt loops so they're gonna be encased at the bottom. And then I'm closing the outside over the pant and over the loops that I already put. Then I'm also top stitching the top of the belt and attaching the belt loops at the top. Didn't film the button ing, but yeah, this is the finished pant. I am very, very happy with it. Hope you like it. Hope you liked the video. If you did, please put a like and subscribe. It's a great help for me. If there's something you want to ask me, please leave it in the comments. I'll be glad to reply. And thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.